Hey guys, uh, it's Paul Jang, and uh, this title is vid is videoed. Um, you know, should we buy an RV? So, uh, I've been on this thought process for a while, and um, I I'm not I'm not 100 sold one way or another. But the idea is to stick with the Class A um, A RV, and so. Uh, it seems like the RV industry, there's, you know, three classes, A, B, and C. Um, it, it says, at least in this guy, that the C is the middle size guy, the B is the smallest one, and the A is the big big one. I, I thought this was reversed. I thought B was the mid-sized one, but this guy saying uh, otherwise, I've kind of found that whether it's B or A, uh, it's a little bit too small. So, um what I found is you could just find the best deal on it and then move with that. The the class A is is kind of where we would have to be, um, at least for our family situation. Um, we have two kids, and I think we'll have more. So it's uh, my wife and myself and our two sons. And the idea was what would life look like if we basically lived in an RV full-time? We've kind of talked about living in, in a hotel full-time, is we're looking to be in multiple states at multiple times. Kind of, um, if you ever heard of the digital nomads um, overseas, we want to do some of that as well. Uh, so be a bit more uh, versatile in our in our living situations. Now, the other thing that I found is that with RVs, you've got uh, folding um, these folding trailers, and um, uh, there's different variations where essentially you have a truck and you pull pull it over i've kind of seen some suvs being able to pull these um pull these um you know rv trailer style um you know attachments i guess, I guess that's what you would call it but um you know it's it the only things that'll pull is something much smaller so if you have a larger family you basically you need something bigger you basically need a truck so what ends up happening is you either get a truck and get this attachment or you're going to just opt in for uh these bigger you know either an a or a b or a c so uh that's kind of what i what i've found at least uh for us it'd probably just be an a but you know uh, what what i've been looking at is um each you know, there, there's different RV companies within every, you know, state or city, uh, but there's also listing sites that kind of go everywhere. But uh, if you need financing, almost always you're going to have to work with some kind of dealership. And um, uh, we've, I've, I've personally kind of seen like, this is one that I was looking at, a 2011 Damon Daybreak. It's got 14,000 miles, 52,500. Uh, it says it's negotiable. And uh, this is more of a listing site, so you could pay money to get onto RV Trader. Um, I think it's like sixty or seventy dollars, but they have a partnership, I think, with Southeast Financial. And so, whether if you're going to go like with RV Trader, and they have you know some kind of partnership with financials or a dealership, for those that don't have all the money, the financing portion is going to be the biggest part, and you're going to have to negotiate that before you really start or look at pre-approvals before you really start. Uh, digging in. So um, these were the um, default settings. So 52500 was the purchase price. The down payment recommendation was 1200 I was surprised with this. I thought it might be higher. Um, maybe it's dependent on, um, you know, the credit scores and stuff. The APR is the interest rate. And this one's for 120 months. So my thought process is, okay, if you basically trade in your, you know, rent, um, right now we're in a three bedroom, two bath in Virginia Lynchburg and we're paying 1500. Well, if we basically swap, you know, our 1500 bill with a $677 per month bill, and then, um, you know, that saves us, you know, what would that be? Three, about $800. I mean, we're, we're essentially saving $800 to go this way. This doesn't include gas, but, you know, we have land in different parts of the country now, and um, we could basically park our, you know, RVs in, you know, different lots that we own for periods of time. 
um, and use them as stays. But um, I've seen places where, whether it's camping grounds or other places, um, that you can just kind of park your RV and kind of stay in that spot for a bit. But, uh, you know, I, I thought this was really interesting because, you know, if you're talking about like price and, you know, living style, if, if you're okay with closer quarters, this has a living area, um, you know, it has your sink, it has your uh, bedrooms, you know, it, it has everything that you're going to need to function and live. Um, it's going to be much, cl you know, closer, you know, like you're going to be much closer to your family by living uh, in this type of setting. But for the most part, my sons basically, you know, they sleep very close to us. And, um, you know, I, I just found at least, at least right now, it seems like they're very attached to us. They want to be with us. And most of our activities aren't really done at home. A lot of it, a lot of times it's, we're going out and doing something. So, um, I really think, you know, for those that are, uh, singles or young couples or any, anything that sort, I think the, this is like really good if you have, um, if you're a freelancer of some sort, or if you own a business and you're not necessarily tied into a certain area, or or if you got in like one of those COVID jobs where you work from home, um, swapping in your you know rent bill for something like this, I think is pretty pretty good. You it, it seems to hold its value a little bit more. Like this is 2011, but it's still selling for 52,500, and so like you could keep it you know, indefinitely or later on resell it if you wanted to, um, you know, stay at, you know, in, in a house of some sort. So um, just some, some things to think about, um, uh, you know, at least for my family, it looks like we'll go with um, a class A uh, if we're going to go down this path a little bit more. I wouldn't just buy this for vacation. I, you know, I'd rather just spend the money going to uh, a hotel or an Airbnb and taking flights everywhere. But, um, you know, this was some of the conversations that I had with my wife and laying out some of our priorities in terms of what we wanted to do. If we wanted to uh, be overseas for a period of time and we wanted a base, uh, should we look at manufacturer homes, mobile homes, maybe an RV? Um, you know, I've looked into things like yurts. So a lot of... Uh, uh, a yurt's kind of like a, like a Mongolian tent, <laughs> and so you can hook it up with like utilities and stuff. So, yeah, we we've been looking at different options, but that RV lifestyle, I think you kind of have to weigh out like, is this a is this um, a, a lifestyle you want to live more in longer stays? Then you're gonna have to go with the A. I, I think uh, you might be able to go with a, a B or C or larger, you know, pull if you are single or a couple. But uh, if you have a family, you're going to have to go bigger. And I've seen people doing this, like this kind of lifestyle. Um, you know, but if you're just kind of looking for a vacation, kind of just, you know, off the cuff, let's go. Then I kind of think having a truck, um, using a truck to kind of go wherever you want and having some kind of uh, attachment in place to go on these trips, that, that'd be a really fun way to go. And then uh, in those cases, I've seen prices much lower than this, where um, you're able to get something used and uh, for 10, 20, 30,000, and it'll last for a long, long time. And if you wanted to and needed to, you could sell that you know, to someone else in the future once you're done with it, if you didn't want to keep it. So um, these are some of the things that you know, we've been thinking about financing, paying for cash, what kind of styles that you would have to go with. Um, uh, we've, we've, I've looked at like RV loans and stuff too. Um, most of the times you're, you're going to need to use the RV as collateral and um, qualifying might be difficult, but if you go with a dealer, so that's the thing with the RV traders. Um, basically, you kind of go in directly to their financing partners. But if you go with a dealer, they're going to be aggressively working to try to get you that RV, you know, because that's where their sales and commissions are, right? So um, 
just food for thought, you might get something you know cheaper from RV Trader, but if you need the cash on hand, you might not necessarily, it might be a little bit more difficult to get that financing. If you have that cash on hand, um, looking at listing sites like RV Trader, um, you might be able to find a better deal that way. So some things to think about and uh, trade-offs that you're considering in terms of lifestyle, um, you know, if you should or shouldn't get your RV. So that's it. Uh, take care. Uh, my wife and I have quit our jobs. Uh, we right now are in Virginia and uh, we're considering our lives and what we're going to do, uh, where we're going to go. And uh, these are all the things that we're working on and playing out in our lives. But uh, land investing is how we got out of our jobs and are able to do any of this stuff. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, check it out in the description below. Otherwise, subscribe and like this channel. I appreciate your time. Take care.